Okay, let's check, check, check. Get that music down. <laughs> You'll let me know if that's too loud. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my studio. My name is Michael Markowski, and today, in celebration of my 100th painting, an almost 200th live stream episode, I'm starting something brand new. So welcome to the very first episode of The Paint Arcade with your host, Michael Markowski. And with this brand new series of artworks, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making art inspired by video games and potentially some other games like card games, Pokemon, all that different kinds of stuff, role-playing games, Dungeons and Dragons, all that kind of stuff, because that's been a bit of a passion of mine throughout my life, and uh, I haven't been able to find a place for it through the different kinds of other episodes that I've been making. So today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be drawing a portrait of Raven from the Fortnite video game series. If you don't know anything about Fortnite, you don't know anything about video games, that's okay, because we're going to talk a little bit about it while we make our painting. If, on the other hand, you know everything there is to know about Fortnite, and this is a bunch of old news, well, there's still a lot of stuff here that's going to be of interest to you, primarily the creation of this painting. And we're going to try to do this painting in less than three hours. And I know for some people that seems like the longest time that they could possibly ever spend on anything in their entire lives. And then for some other people, three hours is barely enough time to just mix one color. So with this series of paintings, I'm trying to teach your beginner or intermediate artist. Maybe you've never made a painting before in your life. And this might be your very first introduction onto how to make a painting using acrylic paint, which is generally one of the most accessible kinds of uh, painting materials you can get. Uh, and if you have a lot more experience in painting, then you can certainly take what we've done and maybe take it up a little bit of a notch. And I'll show you at different times other ways that you can uh, upgrade your, your painting, should you wish. Now, Another thing I would suggest you do is, is if you're watching this live, then welcome. We're going to make this painting in, uh, we're going to do it all in one shot. No edits, no breaks. If there's mistakes, we're going to fix them and you're going to see how I overcome all the different obstacles. If you're watching this after it's aired, the live recording of it, then why don't you go right to the very end right now? Yeah, literally go right to the end. Take a look at how this painting turned out, and you could decide for yourself whether it's worth your time watching and learning how to paint it. Now, I know most people don't watch it all the way through. People skip through it at times, however you want to watch this. But if you want to watch it with me and paint along with me, which is I always encourage you to do, then you can go back to the beginning, pick up from where <laughs> from this point, and, and follow along. And certainly if you tune in live, you can ask me questions live in the chat. But also, even afterwards, you can leave comments, and I'm usually pretty good at getting back to people within about 24 hours. So let's get right to it here. This is the painting that we are going to make. Again, this is Raven. This is, um, I th we'll, we'll talk a little bit about how, how uh, Fortnite works, but uh, this is Raven after a series of upgrades. So usually in in Fortnite or really any video game series that has a character that you can uh, take on and assume their persona, usually you can get new things, weapons, or uh, you know, in this case with in Fortnite you can get like cloaks and you can get belts and different kinds of things that can help you on your quest to in this case win the game and be the last person standing. Got something in my eye there. Ooh. So here's the outline for today's episode. As I said, here's what it looks like. And you can print it out. I'm going to show you how to transfer it onto the canvas. And I'll show you maybe two different ways that we can go about doing this. So that whether you have the same materials I have or not, you could still make some really cool artwork. So let's take a look 
at where you can find this outline. If you click the link below, you'll see a Dropbox folder. And in that Dropbox folder, it'll take you right to here. And you can see here we're on the very first one here. And inside that folder, there's three files. There's the original image. And then there's a P, oh, that's supposed to be a PDF, but it says <laughs> PNG. Um, so you basically, you either way, you'll get two versions of this image, a PDF, which I'll eventually put back up here, and uh, the JPEG version, which, uh, and you can print it out on regular photocopy paper. And I, I just have heavier kind of a cardstock, which doesn't make any difference. If anything, it makes it a little bit harder to get the image onto the canvas, but it's just something I have a preference for. I'll let you quickly know that there's also a private Facebook group just for people who are painting along with me, because often people, this was something that was asked for by people like yourself who are watching, who after completing their painting is like, I wanna share it with you. I want you to take a look at what I did and give me some feedback. So this is a private group there's no one selling anything or promoting anything. It's a great place for people to um, uh, kind of gauge where they are in their own development as an artist. And you can see artwork that people are working on their own, as well as the, the, the images that people have made based on the work we do together in class. And it looks like here, it looks like Charmé's doing the drawing course that I did. So there's a whole drawing course, a 40 episode drawing course. It's all free if you wanna learn how to draw. Um, I did a 45 episode how to paint course. Those links are down below. And then currently I'm doing two other classes. It's called Master Study, where we look at the great artworks from art history, like the Mona Lisa, and we, I show you how to paint the Mona Lisa. We've already did that. We did that Mona Lisa episode, and in about three hours, we painted the Mona Lisa. Is it as good as Leonardo da Vinci's original painting? Not really, but it certainly gets you pretty darn close, and at least teaches you the basic techniques. That if you want to spend another forty hours on it, like Leonardo would have done, at least, then you have like an understanding of how he did what he did to make that awesome painting. Okay, and these are this is a painting we made just a couple of days, or was it just yesterday, <laughs> um, in our master study class. Here's a bunch of this is all paintings in master study. This is one that Paul has done on her own. Anyway, let's take a look at Fortnite today, right now, July twenty first, twenty twenty one. Had to think what year we were in. Is the fourth anniversary of Fortnite, and when you think about it, it doesn't seem like it seems like it's been around for a lot longer than four years and in reality Fortnite has been around as an idea since I think 2011 where basically Fortnite was uh, an idea for a video game that was created by Epic Games and they used they have a lot of kind of tech companies have like a, a free Friday where people stop working on their regular work and they get to a kind of come together and brainstorm new ideas for new products, new games, etc. And Fortnite grew out of one of those sessions where a bunch of the designers, uh, programmers, you know, were sitting around thinking like just throwing ideas. What could we create? What would be a good idea for a video game? And Fortnite, how to explain the, 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 as simply as possible, Fortnite is sort of like a, a single player shooter game, which is like you're, you're generally playing a character who's running around a landscape. And there's lots of video games that do that. Um, and you're trying to basically kill all the other players until you're the last person surviving. Although there's different modes of the game where you could be collaborating with a team of people to be the last team standing. Um, and I think the, 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 the interesting twist that Fortnite has, and it's sort of built into the title there, is that you can build your own forts or buildings and traps throughout the game. So it's not like you're just kind of wandering through a maze and you're, or an abandoned complex or some apocalyptic landscape. You can actively create new spaces for to, to hide out in, to, uh, to use as a defense, but also you can use that as a staging ground for 
for attacking other people's forts, right? So I think that's one of the kind of interesting innovations of Fortnite is the not just destruction aspect that a lot of video games have, but the creation aspect of uh, of these different uh, um, forts, I guess, would be the simple way to put it. So really, it's only existed for four years as it was released to the public. And the character we're going to be working on, Raven, let's just take a look at uh, here, was created, I think, released on was it april 5th yeah i guess it was april 5th 2018 so about three years ago uh, because one of the interesting things also with fortnite is the almost unlimited number of characters that are able that people can can uh, take on as their persona as they play the game so fortnite was was released as part of the nevermore set which i think is in season three of the game and uh, quickly became kind of one of the iconic characters. And one thing that's also interesting with Fortnite is characters are sometimes released and are available for people to take on, and then they also disappear at certain periods of time. So I th as far as I know, for, uh, Raven is still available. I thought it was. I thought I saw something that was still available, but I could be wrong. It might have been uh, retired. So anyway, let's, uh, you could just see a few different images of Raven here. The skin or the outfit of Raven. Uh, you can see some where there, there's even, there are, uh, well, anyway, let's go right into the painting as opposed to the, looking at the images. So I'll sh let me show you how we get this image onto the canvas. Okay, so if you are able to print out the image onto a piece of photocopy paper, then then you have you can transfer this image on, or you could even just paint directly onto this. You could put it into your sketchbook. I know there's some people that are watching right now that often paint their picture into their own sketchbook, and then you have a whole sketchbook full of images. You could transfer it onto a piece of wood. You could transfer it onto a piece of. This is a canvas panel, right? And this is a nine by twelve canvas panel. You can get these at the dollar store for literally a dollar. I, uh, I, for probably the first fifty paintings we made, I just bought my canvas panels from the dollar store, and they work pretty darn well. This one, however, I got from Amazon. So, and it comes. I think I bought twenty for 48 of them essentially they come out to about two dollars a piece so they're twice as much but really two dollars for a canvas panel is, is is a pretty slow amount anyway especially when you're buying them in bulk um and i do find that they are much better they're they're more than twice as good as the the dollar store version Anyway, take these canvas panels, and they come pre-gessoed, as they're called. So it already basically looks like this when you get it, when you take the plastic off. The difference is, is that I took some, what we call gesso, white gesso, and gesso looks like, let's just even take a, a paintbrush. It looks like uh, a really thick white paint. The difference is, is... It, it will dry white, but what it has, is, as opposed to white pigment, is basically plaster powder. You know, like plaster of Paris when you... I don't know if they still use plaster when you break your arm, and I think it's fiberglass, but I remember I've broken my limbs a number of times, and they use those plaster bandages that they put into water, and then they wrap. Basically, that powder is in gesso, and what it does is it helps fill in the weave the texture of the canvas and why that is good why that is something you you most artists like and want is that the more you fill in the texture of the canvas because literally canvas is a fabric right you can get a canvas backpack right or a canvas tent right so it's literally like a woven fabric the gesso fills it in and then if you so th what i've done is i took some gesso i painted them actually on 24 of them right from that i got from amazon 
and I uh, I let them dry overnight. And then what I'm going to do right now is I take some sandpaper, like a, a 220 grit sandpaper, and then I'm just going to sand it down. And that's going to help me get the smoothest surface possible. So it becomes almost paper-like rather than this uh, little bit te more textured surface, which if you're doing a detail like we're doing today can be a little bit of a problem if there's too much texture. Yikes. So this this block is a little, I think it's on its, I need to get some new sandpaper on it. So I'm gonna use, this is a 100 grit sandpaper. And because it's a lot more coarse, that sandpaper, you just want to be careful you're not pressing too hard. I was just sort of lightly rubbing on it because I just want to get that top surface uh, sanded off, right? So I'll move my sandpaper out of the way, clean off my surface here. I could see all that, I don't know if you could see that powder flying everywhere. That's was on the canvas here, making for a little bit bumpier of a texture. Now there's two ways we can get this image onto the canvas, and I'm gonna show you both ways. One of which is we can use carbon paper, and the other way is we, we can just use a regular pencil. So let me get a regular pencil out here, okay. So I'm gonna use a regular HB pencil. I wonder if I have just a... Um, so this is, uh, it's it looks kind of fancy because it is a kind of a nicer brand of pencil, but essentially it's the same kind of pencil that most people have kicking around in their drawer or uh, you can get, you know, fine on the sidewalk somewhere that's usually yellow, right? So what I'm gonna do with this pencil is let's say I'm gonna take it on it on the back side and just rub like this. And what I'm trying to do is I want to rub where the let me see if I can hold this up so you can see in the overhead camera. You see how here's his body shape. In fact. You could even kind of just hold it up a little bit so that you have a little bit of an outline for yourself and you know where it goes. And then I'm, I'm gonna do half of it this way. Maybe I'll just do a leg so you can you get in the idea because this is the, the, the least effective way, but it works. It still works, not as well, however, as if we use the um, carbon paper, which I'll show you here in a second. Actually, let's do the both legs. So I'm just trying to get as much graphite onto the back here. There we go. Okay. So. What I'm going to do then is I've got, you ideally would do the whole thing, but you don't need to go all the way to the edges because we're not going to trace any lines all the way to the edges. So we're just looking for where the black lines on there are. <clears throat> and we're not going to do this at the beginning of every episode. It's just since this is the very first episode of this series, I can always tell people, just go back to the beginning and I show you how to do this step by step. Okay, so I'm going to put some tape down. This one doesn't really matter if it's crooked. There's not really any lines that are going to, you know, if I could do all sorts of funky things with it, and it would still be pretty good. The only thing I would say is you probably want to make sure this figure is relatively close to the center, and probably it's best, if anything, if this is maybe a little bit closer to the left-hand side because your character's looking this way, and generally you want to have more space on the side that they're looking into than in behind them, because in behind a person or a character is sort of like a little bit of dead space, right? 
So actually, I'm just going to move mine over just a little bit there. Okay. So let's start. And you know what I also do is I take a, a colored pencil. I like to use a red pencil. That way I can see what lines I've already drawn. Because sometimes if you're using a black pencil, tracing black lines, you'd be like, what on earth did I, I can't, I don't know what I've drawn and what I haven't drawn. So let's, uh, let's start here. And I'm not going to go into all the details. And I'm going to simplify some of the details too. Because the point is, I don't, it's not that I'm tracing the entire image on here. I just want the most basic stuff so that when I'm painting, I have an idea of where things are supposed to go. Okay, so I'm going to continue this. I'll do both legs. And then let's, we'll fold up the paper and we'll see uh, how the transfer worked. Here, so let's just take a second right now and see. And look at that. There's the image on the other side of the canvas. Um, and I'm not sure if it comes across that well. You could see a little bit when I get into the reflection. You could see the, uh, the embossed lines there. So obviously the harder I press and the more pigment that's on the back side, the darker these lines are going to go. So that will work just fine. The, 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 I'm going to show you something that works a little bit better, is maybe a little bit faster. These carbon paper sheets you can get uh, at some dollar stores. You can certainly get them at your local art supply store. And you can also get them at most fabric shops because people use carbon paper or graphite paper to transfer patterns onto fabric before they cut them out. So you take a little piece of that uh, carbon paper. I also put a link to an Amazon link in the description if you want to go buy an, or order some carbon paper directly if you don't, if you live a little bit further away from a store that might have some of this. Okay, so let's trace some of these major lines. And again, I'm going to I'll I'm going to get about as I'll we'll take let's say another 3 minutes to do this. And that should be more than enough. Because I think some people say, "Okay, well I'm going to do a really good tracing job." the best tracing job ever. And then they end up painting over all of the tracings and they're like, why did I do all of that, put all that work into those lines when I just painted over it? So you can see I'm skipping over a bunch of lines here. And also, you know, when we paint this, you know, there's a, there is a lot of detail in this character's uh, skin, as you might, as it's often referred to in Fortnite. So, um, do you do you need to put in all these details? There's, of course, going to be some people who are like, no, it's missing the third feather on the left. This is clearly someone who doesn't know anything about Fortnite. <laughs> so... Um, but that's the same sort of thing when we do the Mona Lisa. There's going to be somebody who's like, No, you didn't realize that the Mona Lisa um, actually once had eyebrows, but over time it faded. So the fact that you did not paint her eyebrows means that you do not know anything about art. Um, so <laughs> you can't please everyone. Okay, so let's just see... I'm going to complete some of these lines down here. Uh, anything that I feel is like really particularly necessary. I think some of that foot didn't come across too well before, so I'm just going to add that. Okay, so let's let's see the difference now. 
right? So clearly using the carbon paper works better. Um, but we could still see some of these lines there. It's not like we can't see them at all. I think since I do have the carbon paper, I'm just gonna quickly trace over a few things to make it a bit easier, but... Oh, that's why that toe didn't come down. Let's... There have been times where I've, I've spent a long time doing outlines and I realize the carbon paper isn't in the right place, or I've even forgotten to put the carbon paper under there entirely, and then I get all the way, and I'm like, oh, that was a bummer. Now I gotta go over my lines again. In which case, I, I would use a different color so I, I know what lines I've already drawn. Okay, so once you've got that on there, we can peel this off. And you can reuse this template over and over and over and over again. You, as, until the paper falls apart, until you can't see your lines because you've traced over it dozens of times, you can use it at, like, um, you could, if you had friends over, you could have 10 people pass this single thing around and everyone makes the same painting all at the same time, just off of one printout. You could also, uh, color it in yourself or if you've got a younger member of your family they could draw or color in with some crayons on that image okay so the first thing that I like to do with my paintings is put a, a what we call a ground or a underpainting to prime this canvas and usually what I do is I just add some warm yellow to my coat, to the paint here. Now, um, I'm gonna suggest you use a, a eight different tubes of paint to make your paintings. And I'm gonna show you what they are. I, I talk about this in, uh, I talk about all of this in that intro to painting course that I did. Um, but I'll talk a little bit about it today since it's the very first episode of a new series just for people to kind of give you the 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 Coles notes version uh, of how to how to make a painting using kind of the system that I've developed here okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add just a little bit of water to this warm yellow paint There is in the description below links to get the exact paints that I'm using. Um, and in that, the very, very, I think it's episode zero of my how to paint class. I have a buyer's guide that shows uh, basically how to get the, the exact same colors from every major brand of paint manufacturer. So that you can kind of paint along with me. Because sometimes people have already some paints, you know, their parents have laying around or they have a brother or sister or somebody gave them some paints and they're like, well, I don't want to go buy new paints. Can't I use the stuff I already have? The answer is yes. Um, it obviously it helps if you have the same paints that I'm using because then you can get pretty, you know exactly what I'm doing step by step. If you're using a slightly different uh, group of colors, then your results are going to vary, right? Just as if you were making uh, trying to cook something and you didn't have the same ingredients as the, the the cookbook or the person on television well then of course there's no way for you to expect that you're gonna your cake or spaghetti sauce is gonna taste the same as the one that people are Gordon Ramsay or whatever is making on television so the other thing you see here is me painting the edges. I like to paint the sides of my canvas. Uh, also because it's kind of cool if this thing is sitting on your shelf and um, what happens is it'll, it'll glow a little bit on the sides. Assuming you don't paint other colors on the side. But it's going to pick up a little bit of that yellow and give it a, just a kind of a bit of an outer glow. Which I think is super cool. Okay, so there we go. That's the beginning of the painting. Uh, a few reasons why I use, I, I paint any color on here is one, I don't like just the white of the canvas showing through. To me, 
that's one of the things I want to overcome as quickly as possible. I want to just cover the painting with paint as quickly as possible so I hide that white. Because the white always looks a little bit cheap. It always looks a little bit amateurish when there's a bit of white of the canvas showing through. So I want to get rid of that. I want to hide that as quickly as possible. Um, and it's just going to make the painting look a little bit more complete faster. And looks a little bit, it just has the look of a more professional artwork. Just as a quick thing, you notice that before I put my paintbrush into the water, I wipe it off on a rag. Like, this is literally an old t shirt that I've just torn into pieces. Rather than throwing it out, I, I, I use it for cleaning my brushes as we paint. And it's a good way of just recycling old clothes that you might otherwise just toss away. And just going to clean up a little bit all this extra paint here on the table. Ta-da! Look at that. The other reason uh, why artists put down a color, and you could put any color down. It doesn't have to be yellow. You generally want it to be a lighter color. You, would, you probably wouldn't want to paint black down obviously you'd, you'd hide all your lines uh, but there are artists who have painted on black you've probably heard of like the dogs playing poker on, painted on black velvet <laughs> uh, I should do a painting of that soon that would be kind of fun but uh, another thing another reason why you do this is it's going to infuse all the other paints we put on top of it with a kind of this warm uh, glow, kind of that golden hour sunset color that we see kind of when the sun is setting. Uh, it looks, it gives it that kind of Instagram filter that I like. It makes the colors a little bit more saturated. Traditionally, artists might use like a, like a brown or a warm red uh, or brownish red, and they would do exactly what we just did here. And I have done that in previous episodes of the other classes. Uh, but it's more and more, I've just come to use what I call my warm red, which is already a bit of an orangey quality, All right? So maybe just while this is drying here, I'll just do a quick little diversion. In the very first episode of my How to Paint class, what we do is we make a color wheel. And I explain all of this in depth. It's like two and a half hours long or whatever. So obviously I'm going to go into all that detail here. But I do think that if you've never painted before, learning a little bit about the color wheel would be hugely important. Um, but what, I've, what you see here is there's, I have two yellows, two blues, and two reds, right? So we can even put these out here on the canvas. Here's my cold yellow, my cool yellow. And my warm red or my warm <laughs> yellow and then here's my warm red and my cold yellow or cold red uh, <clears throat> let me let me do that again let's do that all again because I feel like I'm saying the, okay here's my cold yellow and my warm yellow right and the difference between them is this one looks maybe a little bit more um, like looks probably what people when people think of like a yellow like a primary yellow it's probably a colder yellow it's a bright more saturated often we call like a Hansa yellow I don't this is kind of a more generic just as primary yellow um, but it what why it's colder is it doesn't have any red in it doesn't have any orange in it in fact if anything it's got a little bit almost imperceptible amount of blue in that color right so it's going to go to green really easily and here's our warm yellow and what makes this kind of interesting is it's got a almost it already looks a little bit orange right and that's why it's kind of moving towards the red because warmer colors have an orangey cast to them they literally have some orange pigment in there so let's go to our reds now i've got two different reds i got a warm red and I've got a cool red. And the warm red has a bit of orange in it, right? So it's already got that kind of fire engine, kind of like warm red quality. Whereas my cool red 
has a magenta or a pinkish kind of quality. And it almost starts to look like it's going towards the purple all by itself. So it's got a little bit of that blue in it, which means when I mix blue into it, it's gonna make a really nice purple, right? And then lastly, we have our cool, our blues, and we've got a cold blue and a warm blue, right? And the warm blue has no yellow in it, but it might have a little bit of red or orange in it. So this is an ultramarine blue. It's a, usually one of your darker colors and darker blues for sure. And it is gonna make a great purple when we take our cold red and our warm blue together, they make a beautiful purple. Then we've got our cold blue, which already has a bit of a greenish quality. It doesn't have any orange in it whatsoever. So when we mix our cold yellow and our cold blue together, we're gonna get a really, really bright, saturated, almost fluorescent green. Similarly, when we have our warm yellow and our warm red here, and we mix these together, we're gonna get our most bright and intense orange. So the reason why I suggest you have these six colors here, as well as a black and a white, although you're barely gonna ever use black, you can get one of the smaller tubes of black paint. And even if you had a small tube of black paint like this, especially if you're painting the way I do, it, it's gonna take you a couple of years to use that whole tube, right? Um, so black and then a white, often, the two colors that we end up using the most are white and warm yellow, right? So if you're thinking of like, which ones do I need the most of? These would be the, what you, what you, most, not even just me as an artist, but most artists use most of anyway. So that's a really quick synopsis of this whole painting system. And the other thing we did, I think this is in episode two of that intro to painting class, I show, so we, we mix the outside of the color wheel first. And then what I did is I wanted to show people what happens, so to, when we mix our cold yellow and our cold blue together, we get this nice bright green. But what would happen if we mixed our warm yellow and the cold blue, or the warm yellow and the warm blue? Well, they are a little bit further away from one another on this color wheel, right? So what happens is because they're further away, the color that results from them is further away from the edge. And on the edge of the color wheel is where our brightest colors are. And so the bright, super saturated colors are on the outside. When we start mixing across the color wheel, we start getting more muted colors because they're getting close to what we call the neutral core and the neutral core is where brown and gray lives, right? And the more colors you mix together, the more you're gonna get a grayish, muddy color, which might sound like totally, you know, the least desirable thing possible, but the secret to painting is that usually in, especially the history of art, like if you look at the Mona Lisa or you look at any really famous painting, most of the painting is made up with colors that are close to the neutral core, that are browns and grays, and just little kind of pops of brighter colors. So something to just kind of think about, because I think a lot of people think, oh, I want the brightest colors possible. Whereas usually in the history of art, people are working from the center with just a little bit of colors as highlights. Anyway. Um, that's a really quick introduction. If you want a lot more in-depth version of how all of this works, I strongly suggest you watch those intro videos. So what I'm gonna, actually let's put, I'm gonna put these labels <clears throat> on my palette so that you can see what colors I'm actually using when I'm mixing. Okay. So I'm gonna put the colors. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be in the in the orientation that I've put these down. But again, if you're painting along with me and you want to avoid as much confusion as possible, then it would probably make sense to uh, to follow the same. You know, the blues on this side and the reds on this side. 
I have seen people make a color wheel where the yellows are on the left or the bottom or the you know and the reds are here the blues are, it doesn't it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at, at all um, so and usually what I do when I'm putting paint on my palette is I put about as much paint on my palette as I put toothpaste on my toothbrush um, no having said that you're probably like wow that guy really puts a lot of toothpaste on his toothbrush wow he must be a power brusher um i don't know why i squeezed so much paint out i think it's just because i'm talking while i'm painting and uh sometimes i just i'm a little it's a little hard to do two things at once right so um there we go and I'm not even going to put any black down just yet, but I will put some white down. And you don't have to use a circular color palette like this. I find it helps, but a lot of people have square palettes or rectangular palettes. Some people are painting on the tops of, um, you know, uh, plastic lids from Tupperware or Rubbermaid or that kind of thing. Whatever works. I used to actually use a big piece of glass when I painted. Um, because then it's really easy just to scrape all that paint off at the end of the day because glass or acrylic doesn't really stick to glass very well or neither does really much else. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this here. It's almost dry. One of the things that I often use is a hair dryer, right? Maybe you have a hair dryer of your own or you have a family member who has a hair dryer. If you're going to borrow your sister's or your mother's or your dad's hair dryer, just be careful you don't get too much paint on it because it might really annoy them. <laughs> or you're not using it at a time where people are getting ready for work or school. But uh, it's going to really help speed up the drying process of the acrylic paint. So I'm just going to mute my microphone because it can be a, a little bit loud. My microphone is right there. and <laughs> This makes a lot of noise. So. Okay, so, you know, it doesn't take a lot to, um, to, to dry the paint. One of the reasons why I put a little bit of water into the paint when I'm painting that under that wash is that it makes it dry a little bit faster. If I was to paint a big thick coat of that warm yellow down first, it might take an extra 10 minutes for this to dry. But really, one of the most important things is that is basically the only time I am going to mix water into my paint for the entire painting process. One of the, the foundational fundamental mistakes that I often see artists making is they're always putting water onto their brush when they mix paint. And I think it's because a lot of people learn to paint with watercolors first. And obviously if you're using watercolors, you've got to activate it with water. You're putting water on your brush and you're mixing it into those little cake rounds. And so if your paintbrush gets dried, there's no paint comes off onto the canvas or the paper, right? Acrylic paint is different. It already comes with water or in the, in the paint. So we don't need to add more water because what ends up happening is when we add water to the acrylic paint, it starts falling apart, starts breaking down. Think about how we use water to clean the paint off of our brush, right? So it literally destroys the bonds that hold the pigment to the canvas. So we don't want to be putting too much water into our paint. It also makes it thinner and more transparent, whereas I want the most bright colors I can possibly get. If you do want to dilute your canvas or the, the, the uh, paint when you're painting with it, Here's a couple of things that I'll suggest you use. Um, okay, so 
here's some materials that you can use for thinning your paint out because that's often why people put water in their paint is they want it to be a little bit more flowy when they're painting right so here's a couple of things and or also to make it more transparent to do glazes which is a little bit more an advanced technique which we'll probably use today just so you can see how it's done but a few things that that artists will commonly use are are medium right you mix either a matte medium or pearless or pearl uh, medium which means it, it's it's not shiny it's flat it has no reflect it has a slight reflective quality to it because all acrylic paint is plastic and just like any other piece of plastic it's kind of reflective to light but matte medium is the least shiny and then you have gloss medium which is glossy or shiny so these are identical different brands obviously but the matte medium doesn't have a shine to it. I personally prefer matte over glossy, um, although some people really like glossy paint. Um, gloss will make the colors, especially blacks, look darker and more intense, whereas matte tends to make things look a little bit more subdued. Um, but I do think, personally, I find when acrylic paint gets really glossy, it just looks kind of cheap and plasticky versus the the more matte an acrylic paint looks the the more it looks maybe a little bit more like oil paint which traditionally people have favored over acrylic paint uh, although that's definitely changed over the maybe even the last 10 years most of the people painted with oil paint serious serious fine artists would paint only with oil paints and then kids would learn how to use acrylics well, the quality of acrylics paints has just gotten better and better and better and better to the point where I think a lot of artists, serious artists now use acrylic paint. Uh, anyway, so these, basically, um, these mediums are, are, they'll dry totally clear if we painted them on the canvas, especially with the matte one, you wouldn't see anything there. The gloss one, we would see a little shiny area. They might look like there's still some wet paint on the canvas. Um, but uh, basically, they're, they're exactly what's in paint. It just doesn't have any color in it, right? So you're basically just adding the, the what we call the binder, um, and you can mix it in and make your paints a little bit thinner. So you can use that instead of water. And then there's two other little things that we sometimes use in these classes. We often use a thing called um, the slow dry medium. It's so a slow dry medium or paint retarders. It's sometimes called slows the paint drying time down, right? So whereas let's say if I put some of this slow dry medium into the painting that I made just to, or this yellow I put down there, instead of it being dry and what, what was that five minutes, it could take 20 minutes for it to dry. And there's various different reasons why you'd want your paint to take longer to dry because maybe you want to do some blending in there. And if it dries really fast, it's hard to do some blending. The other thing we're, we often use is glazing fluid. This is satin, uh, same thing as matte. They're interchangeable, satin and matte are the same thing. And this is great for doing really thin layers of almost totally transparent paint. So often people who are doing portraits use a lot of glazes. Like the Mona Lisa has got like maybe 50 or 60 very thin glaze, glazed layers of paint that are almost totally transparent to build up that very soft super subtle transitions of color as around her face right um and lori in the chat says do you varnish with matte or satin gloss great question we haven't really talked about varnishing in any of the episodes we've done so far but um that's a great question. Uh, if I was to varnish, I probably would still use a matte. I just like that look, but I would say I am probably in the minority. The vast majority of people when they're varnishing use a gloss because it makes the colors, the contrast in the colors a little bit more intense. It's the same sort of thing if you've ever you know, gotten your photos printed at like the Walmart or you know the uh, London drugs or any kind of place most of the, the time the default is glossy photos and it has the they're kind of shiny 
and you have to select matte if you want matte, right? So you have to kind of go off the default, the glossy to the, to the matte. I personally always get my photos in matte, but I would say 95% of people get them as glossy. It's just a total personal preference. And if you're interested, you can just do it yourself and just sort of see what you think is best. Um, one of the reasons I often use matte is sometimes my artwork is framed and so it's already gonna have a glot, like usually most frames have a glass or, or plexiglass that is reflective and you may not want a reflective glass and then a reflective painting underneath because now you got lots of like reflective glossy stuff happening. So at least if it's framed with a shiny glass and the paint is matte underneath, it's not gonna, it, you're sort of cutting the gloss factor in half. So great question. Um, let me see. I see in the comments, IBCOMC Ram Sunder says time is 615. Okay. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 that's good to know, uh, the time. Um, and Paula says there, love the bonus party. Thanks, Michael. So I've got a... Um, an ice pack above there because it's hot in my studio and it's already dripping onto the painting. That is always um, a bit of a pain, so I'll have to monitor that. But that's also something that you see throughout these episodes is things like water falling on there. You drip some of your coffee or your your soda or your beer or whatever on your painting or you spill water on it how do you fix those things if you can get at it really quickly like i did and you can wipe it away great if i had let that sit there for even another 10 seconds what might happen is a little bit of a it might start to dissolve the paint and we get a little bit of a circle forming there so anyway um I usually don't do this much talking uh, about some of the basic stuff at the beginning of every episode, uh, but again, since today is the very first episode of this new series, I'm trying to cover all the basics so somebody can go back to this and watch this to get most of the questions answered. Um, okay, so let's look at the painting, uh, or the original image. This is uh, designed on a computer, so it's originally a, a digital image, and think about how we're going to paint that onto here. Usually what I do is I, I start in the background, get the background done, and then I move to the foreground, and then I go back to the background, and then finish on the foreground one last time. So what that means in this image is that I would start by painting this blue around here, and then work on the character in the center, Raven in the center, and then go back to the background. If there's any touch-ups that I need to do, and then fin go back to the foreground, to the character in the center, and finish that off. We have this, the background is both, depending on how you want to paint it, very complicated or, or pretty straightforward. There's, um, if we want to do this blend where we have a light blue in the center going outwards, that's a little bit more complex. If, however, all you want to do is put one solid color down, then that's pretty straightforward. And if we do that well the first time, we don't even have to go back and touch it up. I'm gonna suggest, since today is our very first episode and we might have some brand new people joining us, that we just choose a flat color to put in the background. So rather than mixing a bunch of different colors, we're gonna try to make this painting as relatively simple. And since I really wanna to try to get this painting done in let's say the next two hours, um, I'm going to try to cut <laughs> some corners as much as possible so we can fit it in in a, in a relative manner of time here. Okay, so I'm going to use a cool blue because the cold colors like to go backwards. So we often put our cool, cool blue, cool yellow, cool red, cool orange, cool green, cool purple, cool brown, cool gray, and any other cool color in the background because that'll make it cool colors tend to recede right they tend to just look like they are they belong in the background versus warm colors 
want to go forward, right? They tend to advance towards the viewer. And if you think of the canvas as like a, a window that we look through, we want our coldest colors as far away as possible. So in this image, we want a cool color behind the raven so that it's not kind of creating some weird optical illusion where it seems to be coming in front of this of the character right because that would be really weird so um let's th we're going to use a cool blue and i'm going to so let's get some cool blue on here and i think i'm going to add a substantial amount of white in there so we'll have a cool blue with some white. Okay. So you just see I took a big heaping of it. And you know, it's pretty close to the original there. Um, I think it could, it depends where we're looking. If you're talking about like right in the very center, it could use a little bit more white and maybe a little tiny bit of yellow. You gotta be careful, otherwise it's gonna go green very quickly. Um, and then towards the outside edges, if you're gonna blend it, I think there's a little bit of warm blue in those edges, but we'll just kind of stick around this area. And I'm gonna mix a bunch of it right now because we've got a bunch of, we've got a, a, kind of a large surface to cover here. And you'll notice that I'm not mixing all of that in because that, if I mixed white into here it's going to take me half of my white tube of paint to lighten up that blue so i don't want to use up that much paint to do this background okay so i'm going to start with a big brush and i'm also going to take a smaller brush so that i can get up close to things so maybe let's start out doing a quick little outline around here now and i'm not afraid of painting over my lines at all. In fact, it's kind of good to get a little bit over these lines so that we don't have any of that blue showing. And then I'm gonna, once I've got that line in here, then I'm just gonna go around. And you can go right up to the edges here. Okay. And then let's keep on going. Let's get right in here and again I'm painting into some of that like that area right under his arm and I'm gonna go zoom in here in a second we'll just show you a little bit of what it looks like zoomed out All right you can see there's a little bit of some areas oh look at that it's a little bit darker and that's because the paint was not fully mixed properly on my brush I just brush it right out okay so let's zoom in and here you can see that and you can see I often use the other paintbrush as a palette so I don't have to hold it and uh, So the reason why I'm doing it this way is I can get a pretty clean outline around this figure. Oops, sorry. The other re thing, the reason why I'm not going all the outlining the whole figure and then painting with a bigger brush is I don't want to have any um, kind of sharp or, or like, because as the paint dries, it dries quickly. That's the benefit 
um, of acrylic paint and also the the thing that can cause people most headaches is acrylic paint dries really fast so by doing it this way I avoid having kind of some edges I just it almost looks like I've done the whole thing with a nice big brush all right so let's keep on going here I might run out of blue paint or this this baby blue color that I've just mixed we'll see if I can make it all the way around probably have to do a second coat of this because what happens is the paint dries and then as it once it's dry I can start seeing things that I missed almost out of paint by the time I get around here so the other thing too is the second coat of paint I won't need nearly as much paint to do this because uh, I'll have really covered the surface pretty well by that point so it's the first layer that is really the most important now I know some people will say why if you're gonna paint this whole thing blue anyway why would you even bother putting that yellow isn't that just a big waste of paint and the answer is is no it's not a waste of paint because that color that yellow is maybe it's mostly covered but it's still it's it's actually affecting this blue it's it's warming up this cold blue and giving it just a little bit more depth that it might otherwise not have right and as an artist I'm always looking for more depth, more complexity, um, more things in there to that people can look at um, rather than something super simple. Okay. So that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's zoom back out. Find a little bit more. There we are. There's a little bit of yellow showing through, which is not surprising to me. Um, but I'll let, I'm gonna let this dry. Remember I said I, I, I do some stuff on the background, work on the foreground, and then go back to the background and do any fixing, cleaning up that might be required. Okay, so while this is drying, one of the things I'd be curious to know in the chat, have you ever played Fortnite before? Have, have you ever heard of Fortnite before? Have you, do you play video games at all? And if not, uh, that's great. Um, that makes me excited that you're here and you can learn a little bit about something new besides just painting. Um, and if you, if you are a gamer and you do play Fortnite, I would love to know what skin you use for, like what character you use. Um, and, uh, you know, what your favorite part of the game actually is. Um, as well as, maybe you're not a big Fortnite fan, but you're joining me right now because you're interested in painting video games. What are some other suggestions for games that you might like to make paintings of? Is it, you know, Mario Kart or Legend of Zelda or, I mean, there's millions of games out there. Angry Birds, what are some other things you think would be a really cool painting for us to make as the series develops? Okay, so, in fact, I'm even gonna set myself, oops. The other thing, 
Another question I would have for people is I, what I'd like to do is turn these episodes into a kind of a game. I didn't have a chance. I, I was thinking about this all day today, and then I took a nap while our daughter was napping, and then I, <laughs> I woke up like, oh, great, we're going live here in five minutes. Um, but one of the things I was thinking is, like, how could we gamify this, uh, this, uh, these episodes? You know, like, you th if you think of it like a drinking game, like, what would be something that we could do to turn this into a drinking game? Um, you know, whether it's putting a, a timer on here. So I'm going to put a, a one-hour timer here, just so I, I can have an idea of how I'm progressing. And I'll just put that off to the side. Um, but ultimately, what I'd love to have is, like, sound effects, and just like in a game... You are losing points or gaining points by doing certain things. Like maybe I'm not allowed to use, a, you know, go back to the tubes of paint until I do blah, 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 blah. Right? So I'm super interested to hear in the chat what your ideas are for making this whole aspect of the painting process a little bit more like a game, like a video game, since that's the theme of these paintings. Anyway, if we look at this, what should the next step be? to make this painting. Well, in the artwork here, we have a lot of grays and blacks and purples in here. And I guess a little bit of blue, a little bit of uh, even, actually this is, there's a bit of cold blue and a little bit of warm blue in here. So what I'm gonna suggest we do, because there's a lot of different ways we could go about this, is actually making a, a little bit of a light purple and just painting that light purple over a lot of this artwork so that that will be another color that is sort of lurking underneath all of the future layers of paint. So if we want to make a purple, what we're going to do, I'm going to take a kind of a medium sized brush here and I want my brightest purple possible. So I'm going to take some warm blue and I'm gonna take some cold red. And we mix these together, we're gonna to get our, our most saturated purple possible. Now, the more blue we put in there, the more purp the more bluish that purple's gonna be. And the more red we put in there, the more reddish or magenta that purple is going to be. Now we're gonna paint this purple over top of this yellow so what that's gonna probably do is it's going to desaturate this purple and maybe even make it look a little bit on the brown side of things, which is, it doesn't bother me, but I think that just as a bit of a heads up, that's probably what's going to result. So let's, uh, I'm gonna go back to this kind of smaller brush that we had. And let's just take some of this paint and um, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking to myself, I might, uh, this might be a little problematic for a beginner painter. So let me just wipe some of this off now that I'm, because um, the thing is, is, if you're a beginner painter, you you probably rely more on these lines that we put down there than than a more experienced painter like myself would be and i'm quite confident in my own abilities i could paint this whole thing into a black silhouette and uh still be able to to find where the eyes go just out of kind of uh, you know, I, these what you just say, okay, so if this is the shoulder and this is the shoulder, and then I look at the original and go, okay, if that's I carry these lines and these dots would be somewhere in this vicinity. But over the course of painting 100 paintings, um, I have realized that that can be really tricky for most people. Okay, it's another drop of water from the heavens above there. So I'm just going to use a slightly different tactic. I'm just going to take this ice pack off, it's dripping water, and let's see if that. Oops. 
I didn't even see. Oh, okay, so here's that's an example of where some more water dripped onto the surface there. I've got a little bit of paint. I'm just going to paint that back for now. This is another reason why I'm going to have to do to paint that background again. Uh, stuff like that happens while in the painting process. So rather than get upset about it, just embrace it, move on. Okay. So I think I'm going to paint this painting a little bit more straightforward. Um, I'm going to basically, I think what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to mix a gray and I'm going to paint that gray um, into the painting here. Now, if you this is the first time you've painted with me, then uh, one of the, th the things that I like to do is I mix my own gray. as a Because you could easily, I have some white and I have some black. I could mix those together and make a gray really quickly. I, uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to make my own. Just because the reason why you want to make your own is, that, first of all, you learn how to make your own color, which is really exciting to learn how to make your own color. And you get to have a gray that has a little bit more personality in, in it. So um, you can always make, you can even buy gray from the art supply store. I'm sure I have some here somewhere. Uh, the thing is, and, and then you could you could put a little bit of color into that gray, but I'm going to show you how I would mix this color. In fact, I'm just going to keep the purple I have on here. And where should we mix this? Let's put it let's put it up here. We'll mix our color in here. So to make a gray, um, I'm going to take some warm, and I want this to be a warm gray. I want it to come forward because our character is in the foreground, right? So I'm going to take some warm blue some warm red, right? Before we used the cool uh, red. So we have these two colors here. Let's just mix that together. And notice, notice the difference between, this is what happened when I mixed the warm blue and the cool red together. I got a purple. Look what happened when I mixed the warm blue and the warm red together. It's basically like a dark, brown not very purple at all something to think about right obviously if i put a little bit more blue in here it's going to look like a bluish brown but not a purple at least not very purple so that's because these colors are further away on the color wheel so we're going to get that kind of a look now let's take some warm yellow and mix this in here and now we really have a brown Right, and that's a really nice brown. We don't really have brown in this painting. So I'm going to take some of that. So great, I've got a brown, but that's not a gray. How do I get the gray that's like in this image? Well, what it needs is we now need to add a little bit of some other colors in here. So I'm going to add a little bit of cool blue into this warm brown. And just like that, all of a sudden this color just becomes like a like just a muddy color right and it's about as it looks like a very dark gray and so for our purpose we can now that you know how to do this this would be basically the the, the color that we could use for our darkest part of the painting um, but let's say I want a little bit of a lighter gray. So I'm gonna, I've got some white here. Let's just mix the white into the color I've got on my brush, this gray. And you can see this gray right now is a bit of like a purpley gray, a warm purpley gray, which for this particular painting we're making is absolutely perfect because Raven is, is a, kind of a purpley, purpley, character <laughs> well, that's really a word um, but anyway so this is perfect because I'm gonna use this color and then I can always darken it later and there's a lot again I should also just state over and over and over again there's a lot of different ways of making a painting and the way that I'm showing you is just one of many so let's take this and let's look here on this painting here 
I'm gonna just start putting this gray all over the place. So I'm looking for maybe the lightest parts of this figure. And I know that in the image, it gets darker on here, but I'm gonna modify that as I paint it. Um, and I think what I'll do just for, for today's purposes, I'm gonna kinda just go, I'm gonna skip some shapes so that it's a little bit easier for people to see how I'm doing it. In fact, let's zoom in. Gonna, we'll zoom in on the screen here in a second. Clear some space to get it. Okay. So we'll do that. Let's do... We'll even put this gray on his... Um, a kind of scarf or balaclava, I guess you could call it. I know this is a, a, for some of you, this is a very different way of painting that you might be used to. You might see people, other people on YouTube showing you just like, basically, they just take the a canvas and then they, they mix the exact color that they want for, let's say, the hood here. And... Uh, and they paint that onto a white canvas, and, you're, and this is about as different as possible. This is a little bit more of like how a painter would paint traditionally, like some of the artists that you might see in, in museums, especially uh, museums with classical painting. Um, so this time, remember how I, I'm just gonna paint a little bit into the background. Let's paint all this out here too. Now, if I'm gonna do more work painting the background again, then I'm not gonna to be too worried about making this perfect. I just, I am gonna to try to hide but a little bit of that yellow as much as possible. So let's see, what else can we do while we're right here? So here's kind of the forearm and the thumb. Oh, it looks like I missed a little bit of where the blue would go between those fingers. So that's good that we're doing this. So I'll just take a little brush. Do I have any of that blue that's still wet? Okay, let's keep on going. Uh, how about let's do this this arm here? So really, what it should just look like is I'm just. It's like puzzle pieces, and I'm or like checkerboard. I'm doing every second thing, and then I'll I'll paint a little bit of that, and maybe darken a bit, and then I'll do use another color. So we'll just go all the way across. I'm not really even looking at the original, to be quite honest. It doesn't really. I'm never really particularly concerned if I get this exactly 
like the original. Just do all these feathers all at once here. And it is a little bit complicated for exactly what's going here around his belt. So I'm just going to turn this into a feather here. I'm not sure what's going on there. So I'm not concerned, you know, some people are like, oh, well, I'm just going to make that one big shape here. What I'm doing is I just want to fill some of these blocks in and I'm going to modify everything later. So um, it's just a matter of, I'm using these as almost like compositional guides so I know what is going to go where once it gets a little bit more filled in. And especially since this painting is a little bit on the darker side, I think this is gonna end up working quite well. I think that's one leg. Let's go to this other leg here. I mean, ideally, maybe you're trying to you'd try to match things. But one thing I noticed about this Raven character is he's not really symmetrical. Like what we see on one part of his body is not necessarily what's on the other part of his, other side of his body. So, which is also kind of a feature I've noticed of uh, these characters in Fortnite is. This also, it's a feature of like video games, and this particular type of video game is people pick up things along the way, and it changes their character, it modifies them in different ways. So, let's uh, these buckles here. Let's quickly just do that. Okay, cool. And then what I'm gonna do is, let's just, I'm gonna take a bit more white on in this purple, and I'm gonna paint that into these eyes. I know it's not the right color. I'm just painting it in there right now. And then let's think about, uh, maybe actually, I'm just gonna take this same white and I'm gonna paint it in a few other places here. Let's just go back over this character.
All right, I'm just moving kind of quickly. Just want to get everything blocked in, all these major shapes. And it really is mostly irrelevant what color. I could be painting greens and purples and browns. Probably it's maybe a good idea for them to be more all in the purple zone so that um because this character is mostly purple but um, okay so leg Okay, and how about let's go back up to the top here. Let's now take, um, we'll do this with a bit of a darker color, I think. So I'm just going to take, we had our, this dark purple previously, right? Let's just take maybe some of this darker purple. We'll use maybe most of this. One thing you may notice with this darker color is even though it's darker, it's less opaque. It's more transparent than the previous color that we were just using because there's no white in it. And that white is a great color for covering things up, for fixing mistakes, etc. White is a, is a very powerful color in that sense. So... Uh, even though this is darker, it's more transparent. So if you're following along, you're like, oh shoot, he painted uh, white in that one, or the lighter purple in there, now he's painting, oh, I got it all backwards, I gotta start over, it's not work, don't worry, it really doesn't make much difference whatsoever, I am just, just doing this kind of blindly, I'm not really looking at the original for any guidance, I, I looked at it w when we originally began, I'm like, okay, that's now... I want this mostly purple, so I'm just using mostly purples to do all of this work. And I know if you're if you're skeptical and you're watching this after it's been recorded, just jump to the end, and you, you should see you'll you'll be like, oh, now it all makes sense. 
I thought this guy was a complete moron. Well, I think he's still a moron, but maybe he knows what he's doing when it comes to painting. <laughs> so. Or maybe you'd think, I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to painting, and I'm a moron. Um, but maybe both of those are true. <laughs> uh, although, I do teach at really the best art school in Canada. <laughs> so, there's some people who think I know what I'm talking about. Okay, oops. And this is the last little bit that I have. Okay, so let's zoom all the way back out. And just take a look at our painting as it stands right now next to the original image okay um, and just I'm gonna clean a few brushes here while I get set up for the next step if you've got brushes like this brush has been sitting out for maybe 10 minutes now it had a lot of paint on it so that's okay because that paint is going to keep the the paintbrush from drying up but if i let it sit there for a few hours and i came back all of a sudden that paint could be could be really dry and then i am uh in a bit of a bind because that i could end up literally ruining that paintbrush So even if, so right now I'm, I'm just going to clean up a few of these paintbrushes. I like to use my own sleeve here. I, I like to, I think it's actually really important to have a good painting shirt and, and painting pants or clothes. You should just expect that when you're painting, you're going to get paint on your clothes. You should literally expect it. And if you don't get any paint on your clothes, that's great, but I bet you you did get paint on your clothes because it's really hard not to you know you're sometimes especially if you just if you get into the painting and you lose yourself in it you you don't even you, you can you I often got paint on my face after usually I, every episode I go upstairs and I talk to my wife she's like you got paint all over your nose I'm like oh I wonder how long that was there for okay so now my question to myself is do I need to work on the background again? I've got this, so and actually this right now, if you're an, uh, there, there's two ways to think about this. This would be a good place to take a break or stop for the day. If you could get your painting to this point in, how long did that take us? That took us half an hour. It took us half an hour to get this painting to this point. So if you can get it here for in one session, that's fantastic. You could then let it sit and dry overnight uh, and then paint on it some more. I'm gonna obviously gonna finish this off over the next hour and a half here, but um, if you all, there's often a lot of oil painters will paint in acrylic just like this and let it dry and it's, it'll be, it's almost entirely dry right now, but give it another 10 minutes, it'll be bone dry and then you can paint some oil paint over top of it. Now you can paint oil paint over top of acrylic but you cannot paint oil paint on top of or you cannot paint acrylic on top of oil paint because oil paint will resist anything that's water based it'll you can paint oil on top of oil you can paint oil on top of acrylic but you can't paint acrylic on top of oil just little things to but anyway a lot of oil painters We'll, we'll do this kind of thing because it can dry pretty quickly and then now you're ready to start painting with oil. Uh, I'm just going to continue painting with acrylic paint, however. Okay, so the question is should I do more on the background? I think it looks pretty good on camera right now. 
but in person I, I do see a certain amount of patchiness in in the painting that I don't like so much so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna paint on it some more now the question is do I want to paint the same blue do I want to paint a different I could paint purple or green or orange or yellow I could paint whatever color I want on top of it right now I think however just for the sake of simplicity I am just gonna use some more white and blue I won't need as much as I need as I used before but and looks a little bit let me see how messy just don't want to contaminate it with too much other colors let's just see it's a little bit of on the baby bluish side of things let's get to make it a little bit darker and I think I'm just gonna make a little bit more Mix this in. You can see I'm, I just turn my brush and squeeze out all of this excess paint. make that just a little bit darker it's a little bit on the two baby blue side for me so I want to darken it down just a bit here that's better I think in fact I think I'm gonna go just a little bit darker again Now, it's always easier to darken a color than it is to lighten a color. If I thought this was too dark right now, I would have to use like four or five times the amount of white paint to lighten it up. So much so that it would probably be worth better use of my materials and my time to just mix it again and make a lighter version of it than try to mix it from scratch all over again. Okay, that's pretty good. I like that. Um, and I've got it, I think it, I should have more than enough to finish the painting. Okay, so let's take this and we're gonna just do the same thing we did before, right? So let's, and uh, let's zoom in here. Uh, it doesn't matter where you start or stop. The only thing that I'm thinking about right now is I'm just gonna, I wanna paint right up to the other colors so that there's no gaps in between. Now that doesn't mean that, that this is the way you have to do it. Um, there's lots of examples of artists, the, the, like Matisse would be the most famous example of artists who deliberately left gaps in between colors they liked that effect right Henri Matisse French painter often seen as sort of like the the main him and, and Pablo Picasso as being kind of the, the big rivals of modern art 100 years ago and Matisse uh, is really known for leaving big gaps between uh, colors and I love that. I absolutely love that particular look, but um, that's not the kind of look that I'm going for in today's painting. So I, I did all these, you know, nice kind of nice sharp spikes here with the that previous purple. I'm okay painting a little bit of that out because I want to get a nice solid background. The other good thing about having mixing a little bit of extra paint is even later on if I do you know let's say some more water drips from the ceiling onto this painting um, 
I can just use some of that color that I have to make a quick little correction and fill in that, that mistake. So ideally, by the time I've gone all the way around here, the background should be completely finished. I shouldn't need to do any additional work to it, unless it's just small touch-ups because I made some kind of mistake. But it, as far as I'm concerned, when I look at it right now, I'm really happy with the, the solidity of this color. I like how opaque it is. And with the big brush. And I know, again, still people will ask me, do you really need to paint the yellow if you do all of this thing? I still say yes. I still think it looks better. I still think it makes for a really cool effect. Um... Oops, let's get... So right now, I've got a lot of paint right here. What I would do is take my finger and brush away from the shape and then just come back here because I really don't want too many ridges. Um, I personally am not the biggest fan of, of, of big texture in my paintings, or at least for this type of a painting because it, uh, is, if you're trying to do a lot of detail and, you're, and you've got a lot of texture you're trying to overcome, it can be really maddening. Because then it's like you're trying to paint over top of these like peaks of valleys of paint and, and especially if you're a beginner artist, it's just gonna drive you out. So there's a little bit of a, I'm just gonna move my finger over top of here The other thing is, is ideally, you know, this is the background, right? And we want it to look like it's in the background. We don't want to confuse people who, th who might think it's like in the front of, and it would be weird if the background was sort of competing for space with the foreground image. So if there's a bit of a ridge that the background is creating that is seems to be literally coming in front of the figure then that's confusing for people looking at it and you know there's a great long history of artists deliberately playing with rules and conventions to uh, create some confusion um, so if that's what you want to do go right ahead you're you've got good company but I would say probably most people painting this painting are not super interested in the avant-garde techniques of like Georges Braque or Kazimir Malevich and Edvard Munch, right, who painted the screen. You know, they're just like, I just want to paint a painting that looks like Raven. I don't, what, I don't even... And so therefore, that's why I'm teaching it this particular way, right? It, it's, we could do a fun video series where we take recognizable images like this and then try to paint it in a cubist manner um, or an impressionist manner it could be kind of fun maybe that's a, a fun video idea but and hey maybe that maybe you're listening right now and you're not happy with the results of your painting and you're like hey you know well, you know what maybe I am gonna try to I'm going to transform this Fortnite painting into a Mondigliani painting. She 
kind of raven with these eyes that have no pupils or irises in them kind of does look a little bit like a Mondigliani painting. Mondigliani was another artist like in this living in Paris at the same time as Picasso and Matisse. Just so throwing a little bit of art history, dropping some art history names into the episode. Now, look, that arm has gone a little bit funky, eh? Um, don't worry about it. it I'm still just p putting in... Uh, in fact, I, I'd much rather have that happen than have big gaps around. Like, even that this finger that I'm just painting. I'm feeling pretty good about all of this. This is the way I want this painting to look at this particular stage. So now I'm just going around doing any little touch-ups here and there as needed. Now the paint is, is really wet so I probably should just let this dry. I'll probably blow dry it to help speed up the paint, the, uh, the drying process. So let's do that right now. I'm just going to clean the excess paint off these brushes, or at least the small brush. Okay. Oh, we'll keep that up there. Let's mute the audio. Okay, so that's great. What I, I do notice a few places where I think I just want to do a quick little touch up. I see a little bit of the background still kind of coming through. So this is this is why painting with acrylic is great because it dries so fast. I can see these things now rather than waiting all night long. A few another couple things happen too. Little bits of hairs and things blew onto the canvas while I was blow drying it because it's kicking up all of this dust and stuff. So just wait until it's dry before you get your fingers in there and start picking at the surface. Otherwise, you're you're it's just it's a nightmare. You're opening up this hole. It just gets you get little um, fingernail marks in there. When it's dry, things like that just pick off the surface really easy. Trust me and. If, you've, if you're a long time watcher, you've seen me, even though I tell people to do that all the time, you've probably seen me get impatient and pick at it, and then I'm like, ah, I tell people not to do what I just did. It's, it's, it, cause it's so hard to just let it sit there while you're, look, while the paint is drying, cause you, the panic is like, oh no, I'm, it's like I baked it into the surface and it's always going to be there. Take my big brush, any other little areas. Oh, 
there's a bit of extra white in there so let's we'll see one of the things that can be a little bit deceiving is is acrylic paint often goes on a little bit lighter and when it dries it darkens a little bit so sometimes you're like oh no i got too much i got some white in there and oh no i'm gonna add a little bit more black and then and then when it dries it's like whoa actually it looks too dark now what was i ah so if you're in a situation like that try to let the painting dry get out the blow dryer and uh and then make a decision after it's dry before you start going back in there and touching it up again okay i think that's good i think now the background is officially done I'm not going to do the gradient effect there, which is a little bit tricky anyways, and probably a little bit harder for, for if you've never really painted before. We have done in the other class, I've, we've done backgrounds, the things that have a lot of gradients in there, and it is pretty tricky. It's pretty hard to do with acrylic paint, very easy to do with oil paint, which would be another reason why you might switch to oil paint at this stage. You could get everything kind of basically locked in and then you could do a really cool gradient effect with with oil in the background another thing people often do i see when i'm teaching classes in person is people are often changing their water every 10 minutes they're going to the sink and switching out the water um I think that's uh, totally unnecessary. If you're cleaning the excess paint off of your brush before you put it in the water, there should be a relatively low amount of pigment in there, right? Obviously it's colored my water. I wouldn't want to drink that, but if I poured it out onto another piece of paper to see if it would dye it, that paper would only barely turn that color. So it's a little bit deceptive. So I'm just gonna blow dry this before I move on to the next step and then we'll, we'll Okay, so I've got a nice background. I'm super pumped with that because I like that that's really nice bright blue. Obviously, it's a little bit different than this. There's the original image has a bit more of a greenish quality to it. Particular, excuse me, particularly in the center as it's radiating out. If you really wanted that, you could take basically this painting right now and then slowly kind of blending a a bit of a uh, greenish white outwards right but let's uh, I want to try to get within the next hour the rest of this painting done so just as a heads up remember I said an hour timer 50 minutes 49 minutes ago so that's where we are so basically in that hour we got the background painted we got the initial layer of the figure done and now, within, I'm pretty confident that we can get this figure in the interior done here in about an hour. Now, obviously, I'm not. If we're trying to do this in one hour, that doesn't leave us a lot of time for really f getting into the the nooks and crannies and details. But I think we can do a pretty good job of getting the rest completed in that period of time. So let's look at this and think like. 
what do we want to do? And there's really, there's no right or wrong as to how we can proceed here, but really what's nice about this is what we would call these colors, especially the lighter colors, are, um, are uh, what we call kind of like local colors. And the local color is the color before it's been modified with black or white or gray, right? It's, it's the color, like if you were to say, what color is this tube of paint? Oh, it's, it's kind of a cold blue. But if I was to try make a realistic painting of this tube of paint, well, there's some reflections you can see here, at, like by my, let's say if I've got my hand over part of it, there's some shadows down here, and so it's a much darker blue. But really what we'd want to try to get most to start off with is, is the local color, the, the color that's basically in the tube, right? And if, if, we're, if we were just painting this tube of paint, we might just squeeze some of this color out onto the palette and paint that right on there. And then we could add highlights and shadows to it. So this kind of purplish gray that we have here is a great beginning because now we can brighten some parts of it up and darken some parts of it up. Um, okay, so um, let's, uh, let's start um, darkening things down. So, and I'm gonna, we can start now going into our smaller brushes to do this because really we've got pretty small details to work into. So remember, this was the dark color that we had before, right? And it's the same dark color that we used to paint really in the body parts uh, or this darker area. In fact, let's just take this dark color and go back over the dark parts that we already, like so in the mask here. Or I guess, it's, I don't know if it's a mask or... Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure what this part of Raven is here. And let's zoom in as we do some of these details. Now, like this part of his chest and everything is, is pretty dark to begin with, right? That's why using a dark color like this kind of works because it's dark anyway. So... just continue what we had begun now remember because and we have to do this because remember I said that that dark color even though it's really dark I still oddly enough see a lot of the background that yellow color kind of coming through so by painting whereas the white when we put white into the color it made it much more opaque Again, don't worry so much about, you know, if you've lost some of the shapes of things. We'll try to bring all that back here in just a brief moment. It's possible that I'm going to need to brighten up some of these darker things because I just sort of threw this color in at random on here. So it's possible that there's places that are darker than this color. In fact, it's, it's almost 100% likely that that's the case. I'm just kind of when I looked at it, I thought like, okay, there's mostly dark shapes on here. So I probably can't go wrong with this dark color. You know, now that the background is really nice and solid, it really already feels like the painting is, is getting closer to being done. 
Okay. Let's even get a stripe on that too. So let's now let's start looking up here. And thinking, I think the next step I want to do is start adding some uh, brighter purple. We've got this purple that's kind of muddy and dark, but remember we made a, a brighter purple earlier? This purple here? Let's add a little bit of white to this purple. Okay, a little bit too much white I put on there, so let's kind of go back to this color. And I'm going to add a little bit more magenta. Get a bit more of a magenta purple. Okay. And then, where does this need to go? This needs to go kind of... I guess that's a bluey purple. I'm just gonna paint it in here anyway. I personally don't like kind of overthinking things. I just start kind of painting and then I can always change my mind later, modify certain things later, but I don't wanna like you know, I want to have fun while I'm painting. I don't want to make it like a a painful process. I'm just going to paint. See, I left a little bit of an edge because that's where it's going to be really bright. And I'm just going to paint this whole thing this color. I'm going to add highlights to it later on. So we're always working from the biggest shapes to the smallest shapes. Notice I haven't done really any fine detailing work. I haven't tried to kind of get the shape of these. Uh, I always, they look like feathers to me or leave kind of forms. All right, I can just paint one that wasn't even there earlier. And then now we can kind of see some of the things that we had with this arm here. It looks like we painted over something. So let's just bring that back. That's good. There might be some other colors I put under there. Let's go add a little bit more magenta back into this color. And I see inside the palm of the hand. Oh, we're going to have to make that even more red later on, but that's okay. I'm actually, let's do imagine the inside of his hand, the thumb. Gonna be more magenta. And I can't see any of these lines. I'm just painting based on what I see in the image. Okay, 
Okay. Let's see, where else do we have? We got a, a, a purpley armband over here. Okay, so that was one hour, right? And that's we've what we've managed to accomplish in that state of time. Let's do another one hour, and ideally we should be almost done the painting by then. Okay, let's come down here to this part of his body. I keep saying him, but I, to be honest, I don't know what gender um, Raven actually is. When we looked at those Google images briefly, it looked like some people had drawn Raven as a female in, like, underneath all of this costume. Um, it does look like Raven in this particular image that I pulled off of uh, the web. Is a male figure just the his body shape um, but I, it's possible that that, um, that it, there's a you know some some women could also have very similar body shape to this as well so uh, now there is this kind of leave forms here I think let's just see how far I can get done without kind of going too far into those, that type of detail. I think, is this another? That's almost like a blue or one. A lot of this purple underneath on this leg, isn't it? Um, so you know what? I think I'm going to paint this all purple. Except for this patch. I can paint that this patch again later on, but Actually, I'm just going to paint all of this purple here. We'll figure it out as we paint it. I'm always just working big shapes to small shapes. interesting because it's like this purple kind of fades out a little bit as we get closer to the bottom that's is it purple or is it just a reflection it's hard to really say okay so this this area that's darker and painting purple over it is it's gonna be a little bit harder to see that we have to lighten that up later on hmm. okay let's 
okay. I'm pretty happy with all of that so far. Okay. We come back up here. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to this darker purple that we had before. And then let's think about uh, any places that really need it, that it should be much, that we painted lighter previously that really need it. Right? So on this arm, let's kind of figure out what went wrong with this arm here. It was something going on with his bicep here. Dude, we'll, we'll paint these. Actually, we can paint a, the, these fingers now. I was going to save that a bit later, but let's do it right now. So it looks like there's another one of these things coming out here. So I'm just going to paint that dark because it's kind of in behind anyway. Um, let's just, this looks pretty dark here. So I'll just paint that down. I think I'll lighten some of that later because we got, I think the light is coming from the right hand side. Okay, so let's go back over here and just think about what can go dark really quickly. Um, looks like kind of inside here. Oops, let's bring that down. Now, obviously, when you're painting at home, you can be turning your canvas and rotating it. I try to, just for the sake of on screen, keep the, the, the painting in the same orientation. On the odd occasion, especially towards the end, I might rotate the picture, but if you need to, to turn the painting in order to get at some of these details, feel absolutely free and welcome to do so. Okay, so I'm noticing this should curve up and around. So I'm just gonna modify that. Okay. Let's go further down on his body here. I think there's these straps are kind of like individual. Put that as a little placeholder there for right now. So 
So I'm looking for like the darkest lines and shapes here. And this is not even my smallest paintbrush either. This is just, I'm, uh, I, I'm using a little bit of a larger paintbrush just to help me kind of get some of the biggest things in here, but I could see why I can also be a little bit, you know, some people might, might need to go to the smaller brush because they feel it's too big. You know, when you're just beginning using a bigger brush for, for bigger details is a little bit tricky. bit of a sloppy there but we can always fix anything that's a great thing with acrylics um, this is is I'm gonna lighten up the inside of his body before I paint these dark fingers over so there's not a, it's too confusing for people so let's just keep on going down here this area is darker, so I don't mind if it just keeps getting darker. This is an area, you know, there's a little gap here, so I'm just gonna make this where, uh, there's a little bit of gap where the, I didn't get the blue paint down there, so I'm just gonna slightly modify the contour of his outfit. And I could do another one there, but we'll just see later on. Look at oops, his other leg. So that will all lighten up. Let's just put some these stripes across here, and I'm going to give a little bit more curve to that part of his boot there. Lots of buckles and clips and stuff on this character. So, you decide how much uh, you need to do to, to uh, pull this character off. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, obviously I'm simplifying a few details here as I'm looking at it I'm like, oh, I missed that or I missed this. Ah. You sort of got this, it's like a torn skitch, or it's <laughs> torn area that's been stitched together. So we'll paint this up, we'll do the stitches separately later. Okay. And so let's zoom back out again. And think, okay, and probably you know, another 40 minutes would be great if we can finish, be all done. And I think we're, we're on track at currently right now to be there. And it also helps, you know, if you're always, if your nose is right into your painting, it's a zoom out every once in a while. So take a step back, put, hang it up on the wall if you can, and just take a look. Like, so now this helps me understand what I need to do for that arm and why it needs to be a little thicker there. Maybe even a little bit thicker. That bicep. And maybe I make this this tricep under here just a bit bigger. I do have a little Whoa! Just whoosh, drop the paintbrush. <laughs> Usually I do that right at the very end of the painting. So that's good that I dropped it. Um, and it didn't land right on the face of the painting. Okay. So. The next um, series of things I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of glazing with the paint. And glazing can be seen as a bit more of an advanced technique. Um, but really, it is, especially if you're trying to paint realistic uh, images, you want to paint things that look like other things. Like you want to paint Raven and it to look kind of like the Raven on the screen. Um, or you want to paint a person's face and you want it to look a lot like a person's face. Using some glazing medium is probably a good idea. Now, a bottle like this, I think, costs probably like 25 bucks at an art supply store. All of the paint together, these large tubes, I think these are, depending on where you buy them, uh, can be somewhere between 10 to $18 a tube for the large ones. The smaller ones are more like seven to $10, depending what country you are and you know taxes and all that kind of stuff. So I like the large ones because you end up, you, they're a better deal and the last, I'll, depending on how fast and how much paint you use, they can last quite a long time, especially if you can keep the caps on them and you don't put them, store them right by the window or something, right? So ultimately, all the materials you could possibly buy, your paint, a bottle of $25 glazing fluid, a pack of, you know, for $12, $15, you can get five or six brushes. Again, this is all in the very first episode of the how to paint, uh, the intro to painting class. I talk about all this stuff, but for about 150 bucks, including maybe maybe 160 with 20 canvases, you are ready to paint for a, a good month. Let's say if, if you're painting every day, right? And most people are not gonna be painting, especially you're watching here, might be painting once a month, two, two three times a month. And so for $200 or 150, that can, provide you enough material to, to occupy you for a year or two. So for a hobby that costs $200 to occupy you all year long, 
I mean, I, I can't really think of another hobby that is that in and of it, that inexpensive. It's a big cost up front, but it's, um, uh, yeah, I think it's, I, anyway, I think it's one of the best investments you could possibly make for yourself. Because the more you know how to paint, the more confidence it will give you. And I think, you know, that's why we really encourage people to uh, learn how to make art in elementary, junior high, and high school. Because art is a really valuable skill that helps people in all sorts of other aspects of their life. It's usually the first thing to get cut, but it's also one of the most valuable things that you can, uh, techniques and things that you can have. Okay. So let's uh, let's go back into. I think I want to start working into here, so I can get the hand, and maybe before let's uh, let's add a little bit of glazing fluid, so you can just see how this process works. You could use a bit of you could try using medium like gloss or or matte medium when you're painting to do some of this stuff. I don't. I've never actually used it like this, um, but uh, I don't see why it wouldn't work. Okay, so I'm going to take what well, we're going to lighten. Okay, this is like, what am I doing exactly here again? Uh, so let's take, we're going to mix this gray. Let's put this gray over here. And then I'm so I could paint this right on top of there right now. It would work great. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix a version of it off to the side here with glazing fluid. So what this does is it kind of behaves a little bit like if we put water in there and do kind of like almost like a watercolor effect. But allows, it's a little, just, it's more subtle so that... Because uh, sometimes, you know, when we're painting, especially beginner's painters are really heavy handed, too bright or too dark. Whereas adding glaze allows you to get really nuanced. I always think it's like it's great for the timid painter. All right. So let's zoom in here and take a bit of this glazing fluid and just start kind of we can lighten up the, the darkest parts. We're just gonna, it's, and this goes on, it'll look a little bit gray at first, but it will slowly darken as it dries. The other thing we can do here is if you have a, kind of a, we call this a blending brush or a mop brush. I'll just kind of show that on screen. It's like this. Uh, you know, it almost looks like a, a makeup brush. I, don't, I would go and, and steal your partner's makeup brush and use it for your acrylic painting. Um, but it is very similar to that. All right, so we can just kind of smooth that out. And then if we let this dry, we can just keep on going over top of it and keep on lightening and lightening and lightening things. Now I'll just have to let that dry. It looks a little patchy right now, but we'll clean it up as we go here. So where's another area we can lighten up, I think, on the other side of his body? You know, which is, you know, it, it's there's a bit of unnatural lighting that's coming from both sides. So, and there's a look, we've got a little bit of a mistake here, some black that came out. That's why we have a little bit of our paint, our blue paint still left over that we can use. Let's put a bit of highlight back on the top of his arm here. So this is an, you know, originally I was going to paint everything kind of quite like a, a gray, and then I could brighten and darken different parts of the image out. Um, but then I was like, oh, you know what? That's going to be really tricky for some beginner artists. So I've taken a bit of a different approach as I started making this painting.
Okay, what else can go? We can even paint this on the outside of the hood. You can see that it, if we just paint it on top of a color that's very similar, it's like, I don't even know if oops, it did any effect at all right up there. Uh, so part of that might need to be darkened for us to see some of this effect. And we can even go over top of... Um, I keep thinking of them as feathers, so I don't know what they necessarily are, but... Okay. Ah, you see this is not quite dry. So what ended up happening is it wasn't dry. I tried to go in there and touch it up and it kind of started pulling some of the paint off, right? That's okay. It just means that I have to let it dry a little bit more before I do any kind of fiddling or in that area. Let's go all the way down to the bottom by the feet here and just brighten a little bit up in some of the darkest areas here. And then we're going to do the opposite in a second here. We're going to darken. I think we need to do a lot more darkening than we need to do lightening. So. Another thing I love about glazing is often you can take the same glaze and put it over different colors. So rather than try to mix a whole bunch of different um, purples, I can just take this glaze, put that in that area here. something happening here. We'll, we'll define this shortly. Um... See, yeah, it's still too, still too wet. So let's just, I'm gonna take my rag and just wipe some of that away and let it dry. And while it's drying, we're gonna go to the opposite side. We're gonna darken a bunch of things. Okay. So, Let's take this dark color. Oops. So here's this dark color we made earlier on. I'm just taking some glazing fluid. And getting that darker color with some glaze. And I even just sort of wipe that excess paint off on my brush. Okay, so now let's just glaze in some darker things. Now where should that go? Where does it need to be darker? How about let's start right around here. It needs to be a little bit darker, this glaze. See how, how when I say it's like a great for the timid painter, it's because we can just darken only what we want to darken very carefully. In fact, let's just darken this whole area underneath here.
just by a small degree. Now I should, it's, I'm a little bit in a race against time, so I, I want to kind of go a little bit faster, so I'm just going to add a little bit more pigment on here. In fact, still not enough. So this is a little bit tricky for our, our time, but there is this kind of reflections on his boot. We'll get, come back and, and work on that a little bit more. But let's just darken in here. And then let's see, what could we do up here? I'm going to start doing a little bit of work on this hand. Now I'm going to darken this significantly here in a moment, but it won't hurt to just Um, so I'm just going to come back actually you know, I'll let that dry I'll learn my lesson from for a change let's get uh, his top of his cloak
Mhm. Um, so that's, I feel good about all this. It still looks kind of crude right now, but we're, we'll start getting into dialing into a few more details here. So I'm just gonna take uh, my brush. Let's do this other hand. And this is my dark paint. Just be a little mindful that I don't uh, start stamping paint all over canvas. So this is paint that doesn't have any um, glaze in it. It's just a dark color. All right? Remember how dark this is the same color that was right there. Right? So I've lightened that up significantly. I'm going to put another couple fingers under here, even though they're not there really in the... Or it's hard to see anyway. Just widening this tricep, the back of his arm there, it just looked a little bit too thin. <laughs> Let's get underneath here, it's a little, should be darker anyway. I'm going to darken that and then lighten it up afterwards. Um, I noticed earlier on when I was going around here that I think this, this needs to be darker right here. It's some sort of restores some of his loot. And then this area here, let's darken that. Oops, let's bring that there. Now I know some of these, there's a lot of belt buckles and all this kind of st stuff on his body and so I'm not going to be able to get all of that detail in this particular painting. But it could be a lot of fun for some people who really love that kind of thing and love getting into the nitty gritty of things. I'm just going to, I'm having to make certain kinds of concessions here in order to get the painting done in a reasonable amount of time and I do th and I think that's a good thing to think about when you're making paintings is like 
what is the most important part of this painting? Like what really needs to be here and what doesn't need to be here? Just keep on motoring around the painting here. You know, like some of these details, these little, I don't know if I'll get to any of that. We'll see. Oh. There goes the lights for a second. Let's just start, he's got a fold in here. Let's get that in right now. It's funny, the other thing too, with doing this whole thing is that you know, I'm painting it from above and from behind a little bit. So things might look really great from my perspective, then I look up on the screen and I see things look a little bit different from above, right? The way the light hits it, so. That's again why it, putting it up on the wall, taking a look at it ever so often helps you see some of the issues that might be there with your artwork. Okay, In, um, yeah, so let's go a little further down here. So all of this needs to get much darker on his leg. So let's take that glaze again. And we'll just, uh, actually I'm just gonna use a little bit larger brush. Go back in here, get some more glaze. And... Again, we'll do a reflection on these, on the boots and stuff afterwards. Starting to kind of look at the time and think, okay, we gotta like, get closer to wrapping up here shortly. So, that, you know, when I'm thinking about that, I think like, what is the absolute most important things that need to be here if I don't go put them on there that the Fortnite Legion is going to come after me and um, maybe on the hood.
Cool thing too with glazing is you can keep glazing over, like you can glaze over one part, let it dry, and then glaze over a larger part, and the darker part will just keep getting darker and darker and darker, or, or brighter and brighter, depending on how you, the, the direction you're going with things. So it's a great way of just adding volume and shading to things. The other thing too I love about this is I can really get some nice subtlety in here. I'm getting darker and darker, but I still can see some of those shapes underneath there. So let's just take another, we'll zoom back out again. You know, I'm looking at, I think it probably would have been a good idea to put, a, a, maybe to do a gradient back there, but again, that was, was a little bit more of an advanced technique. Um, it does look a little bit plain. So I might do a little bit of a shadow down here, which is not in the original image, but it might help create some kind of space in here for this character. Okay. So I think what we need to do is we need to work a little bit on his, uh, uh, the, the fabric, the, the bandana, I guess around his neck. Okay, I guess some of those buckles, they could be a little bit brown, couldn't they? Maybe they'll do a brown glaze. Um, maybe before I do any of that, one of the things that I want to do, let's see if I got any white still on here. Some white. Take some white and I'm gonna go, oops, the opposite way. <laughs> right in to these eyes. Let's take a look at it, the eye shapes. So I'm going to glaze over top of that in a little bit, but I think that's a pretty good start. I'm also going to take this white and let's get some, we'll mix a bit more purple again. This is our warm blue, cold red, mix it together with a bit of white. In fact, I think we want a bit more red on there to get more closer to the original and let's take a bit even more white and 
think about where we want to put this. Get even, I think we need even more white on there. So again, all of this stuff looks pretty sloppy at first, and we're also zoomed in a lot. Like this is the size of a fingernail, right? So most people are never gonna look this closely at your painting, no matter how much you would want them to, or maybe you don't want them to, to see some of these details. Um, but uh, also, I'm just gonna clean off that brush a bit there. So we're using this really bright white because then we can gl glaze and darken any of this afterwards. It should create a kind of a pretty cool effect. Okay, similarly, let's go over to these hands. I'm going to put a bit of glazing fluid into this mixture, just a little bit. Just to help with this process, because these paints are starting to get a little bit drier. So I don't want to put too much glazing fluid because it makes things really transparent, but... So I'm adding a bit of this to these fingers so that they really pop. Because we want this kind of glow from his uh, eyes on there, right? So that's what I'm looking for. Keep on going. I'm going to put some of the same color on his fingers.
that needs that right up there. I'm going to put some brown in some of these buckles, so I'm going to leave that for a second. that up later there's a lot of stuff I want to do later and not a lot of time to do it so let's see let's go down to these feet You know, with trying to do some of this metal, like these reflections, all this kind of stuff is pretty tricky to do, especially in a short period of time. Um, but it's the main thing you want to do is just think about like if there's a, uh, it's just capturing a little bit of it, a little bit of the brightest part. And again, we're going to brighten some up here. I'm just kind of working my way through some of the darkest things here. boot down here highlight oops highlight on the back of the boot Okay, so I'm now I'm a little bit over my time that I hoped to be done by. That's also because I'm just fiddling with details, which I love doing. Um, but I know it sometimes drives people crazy because, but it's also it's, you know, it's when you're making a painting like this, you just decide how detailed do I want to make it. Because I think I'm going to continue working for a little bit longer here. Let's see just how... In fact, I'll put a another timer here. Let's go to...
Oh, not an hour. There we go. We should be all done by then. Or as much as I want to paint on this to be done by then. Okay. So, all these highlights are going to be really helpful in a few minutes. Uh, let's do a bit of that brown. I'm going to mix a quick brown. Um, so to make a brown, let's take some warm yellow, warm red, and a bit of warm blue down here. make this predominantly a yellow brown a bit more blue on it now this color might be a little light there's it is a, it is definitely much lighter but as I'm looking at it, I, I don't know if I mind that so much. It might be nice to have a slightly different color in this image than all purples. I don't know. Let's see. And it's probably going to go a little bit darker anyway, because there's no white in there. So let's zoom in. Fingers are all, all wet. So I've got to be careful about activating some paint that's there. Ah, not sure what happened down. Scraped the picture or something down at the bottom. Another thing I got to touch up. You know, when you're making paintings, you end up seeing things in there the longer you look that you want to to work on and complete. And it can be, it can drive you absolutely nuts because you're like, oh, I think I'm all, oh, now I need to do that. Oh, now I need to do that. And really, like a painting could just go on endlessly as you find more and more things that need your attention. So... I think part of being an artist is is saying no. It's just being at some point you're like, you know what? No, I'm not gonna keep on going here. At some point, I gotta go have dinner. I gotta be with my family. I actually gotta go. I wanna go play Fortnite, right? As opposed to just making a painting about Fortnite. So. So once this is on here, I can glaze and darken this. Um, can change the color and everything. I just feel like it needed a little bit something different in there. I could have painted that in earlier, absolutely. If that's what you're thinking too, so. 
Um, okay, now I'm gonna go back up into the, the face area here. Taking my darker color that I had. I'm just gonna thin some of these lines out. Let me know if the video is still playing. I'm having a little bit of tech things on my side here. Oh no. Okay, cool. Oh, it looks like it's still working. Oof, that's a little stressful sometimes. Um, okay. Sometimes the software that runs all of this just suddenly boots down. And you're just like, what happened? Why? Oh no. And then it just boots itself back up again. For no reason. Or I guess it crashes, not boots down. I don't know what. I've never heard of that term, but uh, okay. Well, I'm running on time. Okay, so let's uh, get going to take a bit of my gray. Right, that's just my dark color with some white, right? This dark color we had here. Just mix some white into it. I'm just going to make a little buckle. Let's paint over. Obviously, I'm taking huge liberties with the, you know, this character and his outfit, all that kind of stuff. Um, okay. shape that here in a moment. It's 
So we're going to put some a, a magenta kind of glaze over top of a bunch of this stuff on the around the face. Um, I just, so I'm just getting ready for that. Just gonna go back and give a little bit more highlight onto these fingers here. Paula says the video is okay. Cool. Thanks, Paula, for the update. I appreciate that. It's really very helpful. <laughs> Sometimes when you don't know what's going on, it's hard to to know if it's if you're still. If I'm just talking to the to outer space. Darken a bunch of this in here in a moment. Whew, okay. Oh, okay, let's back out again. We'll just take a quick look and see where we are. At this stage, you know, this is probably close for a lot of people. Some people might be like, yeah, you know what, I'm pretty happy with mine. I, I could live with that. Um, but there's definitely a few things. I want to darken a few things down, and I want to lighten a few things down. I'm going to take a bit of, uh, I need a bit of more warm blue. Where's my warm blue? Take some white. And 
just uh I'm not really sure exactly what I'm doing here. I should have done this as a glaze, but uh, I can always darken it. going to darken this same color. It's a little bit too dark, so I'm taking my dark uh, color that I've been using throughout and just mixing it in with this same color as I go maybe up here. a bit of uh, uh, cool purple into this, or sorry, cool uh, red, make it a little bit more of a purple. I know I'm going to have to darken some of that, I just, it's easier to darken things most of the time than it is to lighten it, so. really sure what this part of his costume is here so I'm gonna do that very subtly I'm just painting this back in a bit I didn't like that color that was there so Okay, so I, I significantly things got lightened up there a little bit.
Now we're going to glaze things back down again. Okay. Let's blow dry that one last time. Hopefully.
Ah, so I've been muted for I don't know how long while I've been, uh, my microphone was muted after I, I, I stopped to do some blow drying. Ah. Thank you, Paula, for letting me know in the chat. So this is what I, I you know, I, I mentioned the other day, someone said, uh, it's really loud when you use the hair dryer, you should mute the microphone. I'm like, oh yeah. But I have to remember to, to turn the microphone back on because that's what I used to do all the time. Ta-da! So, that explains probably why some people tuned out. It's just painting. Okay, so... Oh, there's a little bit of this on the top of his... Okay, so you can also see a little bit of that shadow there. I can make that darker. I don't mind it like that, like a really subtle shadow. I might do it a little bit darker right by the feet. And then the last little thing that I'm gonna do here, so I'm gonna maybe darken that, and I'm gonna make these eyes glow with some white and a little bit of glazing. So we're gonna brighten that up and have the face kind of glowing a little bit. So. I will mute my microphone and then hopefully I'll remember to unmute it.
So let's do this glowing eyes again here. Let's take, uh, where's my white? There's my white. A little bit of color in there, but predominantly white. And then we'll put some glazing fluid here. I'm just trying to smooth the outer edges out a little bit here. I'm just gonna darken in a little. Oops. Ah. It's, one thing when you're glazing is you have to be careful because sometimes you know you start pulling paint away when you're trying to Interesting though, it kind of makes a little nose though, doesn't it? Okay, I'm going to take this um, magenta. kind of outlining the outer part of the eye. So the inside is going to stay kind of like hot white.
not bad. Um, I'm not too happy with some of the folds on there. This is like... Uh, so let's get a bit more... Okay. Ah, <sighs> yeah, I'm not happy with parts of this there but this is that's not that doesn't make me happy but Take some blue, and mix it into here. The blue is going to be kind of a little act as a bit of a darkening agent. Hmm. Okay, I'm just going to go back to my darkest color. I think we're getting pretty close to being done here. See, it's, it's interesting like when you're when you start painting you certainly start noticing all these details like how this whole hoodie thing the structure of it which I kind of goofed on a bit here which is a good reason why it's it you might want to think about drawing it out as opposed to just tracing an image So 
gonna take some my uh, the, um, glazing fluid. Get a bit of the dark color on there. ever so slightly inside there to focus the light emanating out of his eyes not happy at all with the his hanker scarf or whatever it is um, There's some blues, lots of stuff on there that I'm not going to be able to get to because I'm going to wrap up here in about five minutes. So I think just lastly, I'm just going to add a bit of glazing just to darken a few more things. Um, such as this area. darkening under here if I want. I am I I, I am tempted to add a bit of uh, black in places, like in his claw or his hand, I guess. That could look kind of cool. Um, hmm. I don't know. Let's just see here. Oh, this took longer than I expected. Ah. Nope. Okay, Paula says I gotta call it a night. That's a good idea. Um, I do want to just take a bit more white. Because that white is going to make it really pop inside there. And Maybe I'll give
taking a bit extra white, putting it into some of the places where there's reflections. He's got a little bit of reflection down here, but I, I think I'm going to keep it like that. Otherwise, I'm going to be kind of competing with, with the hand, which I like. Yeah, so... And I, I think I'm going to keep the shadow down here very subtle, very simple. Uh, there is this... I don't know if this is an absolutely stupid idea or not. We'll see. There's a little blemish down there and another one up here. This is still that paint from the very beginning or from when I did the background most recently. Okay. So... You know, not everything I wanted to do is in this painting. I wish I had even more time. I don't think I used my time as well as possible. Um, but it's also one of these things, you know, the, when you make a painting, you learn a lot of lessons about how to make it. And if, you, if I was going to paint this again, I think there would be a number of things I would have done differently. Um... I probably would have have been a little bit more uh, careful about which colors I put where. Remember, I sort of just off at the beginning just sort of put colors randomly. I, actually, I don't know if I would necessarily change that. I think it, w the difference is is if I was doing this on my own without the camera here, I probably would have just painted the whole figure like a dark color or like a the kind of mid gray and then just started putting all these belt buckles and stuff on on top of it but the way that I'm just painting it just so people can understand on camera and also some beginner painters so they don't get lost is I did that kind of patchwork thing which definitely took longer but you know if you're just painting something like this for the very first time of course it's going to take a little bit longer we, we would kind of expect that to happen Okay, I feel like I do need to just, let's just take an extra 30 seconds down here. just lightened it. Now I gotta do it. See, it's one of these things, they say like car accidents happen when you're close to home. Right when you think you're about to finish. See, that that turned out well. I, I Now I gotta blow dry that and touch that up.
want it to be darker right underneath that the, the heel. Okay, all done. I feel like I can walk away from that. Um, okay. Gross fingers of mine right at the end touching things. Okay, good. Well done. So, um, I actually, I really like how that turned out. It, it uh, I had a little bit of a secure, sec circuitous journey to get here, but I'm happy ultimately with the way things are. I'm not even going to look at the, well, let's look at the original one last time here. Um, so you can compare if anyone who's wanting to kind of go back and see if they want to do this painting you can kind of now see what it looked like and whether uh you want to to do this what do you think uh <laughs> i see um paul says good night see you next class and joshua says i just came back to look at the results and all i can say is wow thanks joshua i appreciate that so Thank you everyone for joining me for another one of these episodes. Tomorrow we're going to be looking at the art of Philip Guston. He is a Canadian born artist, born in Montreal, but lived most of his life in the United States. And one of the more interesting figures because he, like you could say the Beatles or Bob Dylan or any of any musician who went completely different, uh, d adopted a very different style um, an approach and content than his previous work and shocked his fans, shocked the art world and uh, went from abstract painting to very cartoony painting. Um, so we're going to look at him. He's a big inspiration for myself and a lot of other uh, contemporary artists. So we're going to do a special episode on Philip Gus. We might even make two paintings of his because his paintings are kind of gooey and and we can maybe part of it is is painting a little bit fast so anyway we'll see you guys uh in the uh on the other flip side <laughs> and i look forward to painting with you guys again i think the next painting i want to do for this series is calamity also from fortnite so um not sure when we'll do that because next week we are going to be painting focusing on van gogh all week so this time next week we'll be painting, uh, I think it's the Night Cafe, I can't remember off the top of my head, but one of Van Gogh's most famous paintings of all time. So thanks everybody, enjoy the rest of your evening. If you want to leave a PayPal donation, I very much appreciate that, there's a link down below, as well as uh, if you want to send me an email or e-transfer or a, I don't know, a, a horse, 
contact me through my email, which is in the Facebook group. So join the Facebook group. Let's see your version of today's painting. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good night.